Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all having a wonderful day today. Today, we're going to be talking about the Vector Constantine 1 to 10 by 24 LPVO. But before we do that, I do need to thank the sponsor of the video and the channel, and that is, of course, Gun Deals. If you don't know, Gun Deals is a website that provides you with links to some of the best deals within the industry. Basically, whatever it is that you're looking for can be found on their website. There's probably a link to it for the best possible price. Now, they don't buy or sell anything. They don't take your money. They merely point you in the right direction and sometimes give you additional coupon codes as well. Now, on top of that, I also produce exclusive content for them over there on their YouTube channel. So go ahead and check all of that out. Once again, that is gun.deals. Go ahead and thank them for sponsoring the video and the channel and allowing me to shoot so much ammunition and give you guys a lot of the videos that I do. Now, if you wanna help me out personally, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe as all that sort of stuff is free and it really does help me out in the YouTube algorithm. On top of that, go ahead and comment what you're most thankful for this year. As I am actually filming this at about 1.30 in the morning on Thanksgiving because I had a lot of work to do today and you guys get a video every Saturday. Now, on top of that, if you wanna help me out financially, you'll notice that this optic is sitting on top of my brand new Mark IV series of upper receivers. I have a few of them left sitting on the table behind me and they're going for about 400 bucks on my website. Basically 18 and a half inch SPR barrel from Ballistic Advantage. It does come with the Ops 12 collar for that over the, over the barrel uh, suppressor for the Mark 12. So it basically is a clone of the Mark 12 barrel. Very heavy profile, very, very accurate. Go ahead and check it out. Again, that's at my website, Focus Shooting LLC. And on top of that, if you want to just support me monetarily, you can throw me a couple bucks a month over at Subscribestar and I will throw you some additional content and get you entered in some pretty cool giveaways. So now with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about Vector Optics, the company and my relationship with them. So for the last, say, six months or so, I've been getting requests to review some of their optics, people wanting me to check them out and uh, basically just see what the optics are all about and if they're worth the price that they're asking because these are more budget and scopes. Now, Vector makes a huge variety of parts and optics, all that sort of stuff. And if I had to compare them to another manufacturer, it would actually be Holosun because I believe, as far as I can tell, Vector Optics actually manufactures a lot of their stuff. And on top of that, they co-own or they own a German glass company. So some of their optics, I believe their Continental line of optics this is the Constantine line, but the Continental line of optics actually ships with German glass and most of the optics are like under a thousand bucks for German glass. So if I had to compare them to a manufacturer, I would compare them to Holosun. They do have lower priced products compared to other competition, but the features and value that they pack seem to be very high. Now we will talk about it specifically in the Constantine 1 to 10 that I have here in front of me, because that's the only optic of theirs that I've tested whatsoever. So while a lot of their optics seem extremely high value, I personally can't vouch for any of those other optics, only the Constantine 1 to 10 that we're gonna talk about today. Now, full disclosure, after you guys bugged me a bunch, they actually reached out to me as well, and I said, sure. Basically, the optics that I asked for were either the Continental or the Constantine 1 to 10s. The Constantine 1 to 10s just became available in the US, so they sent me this optic out. Usually, I believe these optics are somewhere between five and $600, but because of actual good timing for once in my life, when this video goes out, it will actually be during their 20 to 30% off sale for Black Friday. So if you're interested in this optic after the review, because this will be a fairly positive review of the Vector Constantine 1 to 10, currently, if you're watching this video on Saturday or Sunday, it will be 20 or 30% off. Now, on top of that, they did give me a coupon code and it is an affiliate code. However, uh, it doesn't give you anything else during the Black Friday sale. Normally it would be 10% off and I would get a cut of that. I don't know how much that is, but as I've stated in many other videos, I'm not interested in taking your money or being a salesman for some other company. If the review stands for itself and if you like the features that it provides, feel free to not use my coupon code whatsoever because again, I don't need your money. But it is there and I do need to tell you that in full disclosure. But during Black Friday, if you use it, you will get a free 30 millimeter one piece mount. That is the mount that I did all the testing in. Even though I would have probably preferred to put it in a much nicer mount, I wanted to actually use the mount that it ships with, you know, if you use my coupon code or that they sell on their website. So finally, we can talk about the basic specs and features of the Constantine 1 to 10. So 
Size and weight, pretty obvious. This is not a small LPVO. It's about 10 and a half, 11 inches long. It does use a 30 millimeter main tube, 24 millimeter objective. Um, the weight on the optic, however, is an astonishing 18.6 ounces which I believe makes this the lightest one to 10 on the market. I might be wrong about that. There might be something else that just barely edges it out, but currently I believe this is the lightest one to 10 on the market. Now the material choice is very standard. It is 6061 T6 aluminum with a hard coat black anodization. The anodization actually looks really good on it. It is a little glossy in sunlight, so it's not a super matte finish and it has held up extremely well. There's only a few nicks on it uh, for me dropping it a couple times so the finish has held up very very well uh, on top of that we do have illumination from 1 to 11 so it is an illuminated reticle we do have capped windage and elevation however a very very cool feature on this optic is that you can actually swap out the capped turret on your elevation for a non-capped turret. It simply screws off and then you put this one here back onto it. And this gives you the ability to dial on the fly with a much larger turret than the capped turret. And that gives you a more precise feeling if you did want to actually dial with the um, dial instead of like do your holdovers because this does have a BDC on it. For me, for the money, that is a pretty cool feature though I probably wouldn't use it all that much. I did use it during testing, though when I did the drop test, I did make sure that I had the capped turrets on. And since it is a BDC reticle, and most of the time I'm gonna be using the BDC reticle inside of say six or 700 yards, I would probably leave it capped. Though again, if you do plan on doing just a lot of target shooting and you wanna dial, it does have a elevation cap that is a dialing cap instead of a capped turret, which is very, very cool. And one more thing on the turrets before we move on, they are half MOA. They do have fairly precise feeling clicks. They're not the most tactile thing in the world. They're a little mushy, but they're very, very audible and it has a good amount of resistance. It feels very similar to other good value scopes, anything under $500. It feels very, very similar to that, but they're not overly mushy or bad like some optics that I've tested. And uh, that about does it for the windage elevation and illumination. The illumination does not have an offsetting it basically goes from zero to 11 and you can completely rotate it. So most of the time when I'm outdoors, I'm gonna be using it on 11. We'll talk about the illumination a little bit later, but it is pretty decent and definitely daylight usable. It's not like daylight bright, like a red dot bright, but it is fairly bright and works very well for drawing your eye into the reticle, which is also very good, which we'll talk about in just a minute, but it does not have an offsetting or a way to lock it. Not really a big deal, but that is something that I have seen on other optics in a similar price point. Now, moving back from the turrets and the illumination, we of course have our magnification ring. It is a very smooth 180 degree throw. It is a little tight, but fortunately they included a integrated throw lever, very, very similar to the Strike Eagle Gen 2 series. If you're used to that or you've seen that, it is a thread in throw lever. So if you want to make sure that that thing never moves, go ahead and add a drop of red Loctite or your favorite brand of uh, thread locker and it will hold it in place just fine. Uh, moving back from there, we of course have our very standard rear diopter, which has a good amount of resistance. It's very, very smooth, uh, which is a good thing. You do want to have some resistance on your diopter because of course you're setting this reticle to your eyes, which is very, very important. Everybody's eyes are a little bit different. Uh, so you wanna make sure that that doesn't move accidentally and then you bring it up and then the reticle is all blurry. That could really throw you off. So that about does it for the basics. Uh, overall, it does everything pretty well. It does have an integrated throw lever, which is something that I like to see on every LPVO that I test. If it doesn't have an integrated throw lever uh, and it doesn't include an external throw lever, it's a pretty big miss, especially when you're asking, you know, four or $500 for the optic. Now on top of that, one to 10 in a large package, not overly large, but it is a little bit of a large, long LPVO, but it's still fairly lightweight at 18.6 ounces. So overall for the exterior, while it is very, very simple, I think that it does everything that you need it to do. Now let's actually talk about the stuff that is going to be the most important for shooting with an LPVO. That is going to be your eye box, your eye relief, your field of view, your reticle, your 1X performance, which is very, very important. So let's go ahead and start off with eye relief and eye box. So they quote it on their website as about three inches, 3.7 to four inches. 
And on 1X, you of course, as with most LPVOs, you have a very, very forgiving eye relief. And on top of that, the eye box is a little tighter than I've seen on other LPVOs, but still not bad. What that means for you is that on 1X, you have a very, very forgiving usable optic that you can use in strange positions, as you'll hopefully see throughout some of the B-roll, the intro, all that sort of stuff. You can make it work in weird positions. Is it as fast or as intuitive as a red dot? No, and it's never going to be because you have a lot of curved glass in between your eye and the target, so there's always gonna be a little bit of a disconnect there. So the eye box eye relief is very good uh, to the point where it did not slow me down in any noticeable way in terms of speed or target acquisition or target transition. So it should be noted that I am somewhat of an abnormality when it comes to LPVOs, as I really, really enjoy shooting LPVOs. They are my favorite optics to use. And on top of that, I have exceptional vision. I have 2010 vision in my right eye, which is my dominant eye. Uh, most optometrists don't have a measure high enough to test my vision in my right eye. So I have extremely good vision. If you have poor vision, however, and you wear contacts or something else like that, you put a bunch of other glass in front of your eye, probably not gonna have as good of a time as I do. So while for me, this is extremely usable, any LPVO mostly is extremely usable, for you, it might not be. So you might need to take some of what I'm saying with a grain of salt. Also the fact that I'm a big fan of LPVOs, which means that I shoot with them the most. So for me, very, very usable in terms of eye box and eye relief. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the field of view because the field of view is also something on this optic that is very, very good. So for me, if you know my scale, anything above 100 feet on 1X is good. Anything above 110 is very good. This has a field of view of 114 feet at 1X. This puts it in the upper echelon of most LPVOs in terms of field of view, especially for a 1 to 10. This has great field of view on 1X. The edges of the glass tend to kind of melt away when you're using it, when you're target transitioning with it. You really don't notice it all that much, which allows you to see more and be more target focused. Also, it's a personal preference thing. I just like to see more through the glass. But where that pays off the most is of course you have 10X magnification on this guy. So when you're dialed all the way into 10X magnification or anywhere in between, you are of course going to see more of that magnified image. So if you're at like three or four X and you're still seeing a huge amount uh, in the glass itself magnified with that, with that additional detail, that is a huge advantage to something that has a field of view at say 90 or 95 feet, like some really expensive optics have really terrible field of view. Um, it's just much more pleasurable. You see a lot more at long range when you're cranked all the way up in terms of magnification. And it's just a nice feature to have. Now it's not crazy important. And I understand on one X, it really doesn't matter all that much at all. It's just a personal preference thing for me. And it really does come in handy at the higher magnification ranges. And since it's a one to 10, you have a lot of higher magnification ranges. Now, uh, talking about all of that, all of that seems very, very good. Now let's go ahead and get into the biggest downside of the optic. And that is going to be the glass quality is fine. And fine, I mean, it's on par with most other budget glass. Uh, think your Strike Eagles, think your, think your Swamp Fox Arrowheads, your Swamp Fox Tomahawks, uh, Burris RT6. It's basically on par with all of those except for one area and that is that to however they're getting all of these features into this optic the 1x definitely does suffer a little bit it's a little bit warped and a little bit fisheye towards the edge of the glass again not unusable and as i've said it's very pleasurable to use very easy to use and that is also helped by the reticle which we'll talk about in just a minute but the 1X is definitely towards the bottom half of the pack in terms of uh, comparisons. For instance, the best 1X performance out of any LPVO under $1,000 is probably the Vortex Viper PST Gen 2, which is still my favorite LPVO to use. That 1X is very, very good, especially for me. Again, I have great vision. I really love LPVOs. So that is an exceptional 1X. This is going to be much more fisheye. You will definitely notice it, especially if you look side by side one image is going to be very flat, very natural. 
And this is going to have a little bit of fisheye, maybe a little bit of magnification. Again, that also depends on your diopter and how far you set the optic forward. So there's a little bit of play in there. But overall, the 1X performance is a little bit lacking compared to other budget LPVOs. So that matters if you plan on shooting mostly inside of 100 yards and then occasionally at longer range. However, if you think you're going to be shooting mostly at beyond 100 yards and then occasionally inside of 100 yards, then it won't be as big of a deal to you. So it should be known, though, that the 1X performance uh, combined with the mediocre or average glass means that it's really nothing special on 1X. Now, where the poor glass, or not poor glass, let's say average glass, because it is average for the price point, if you have good vision, if you're fine with budget optics, you are going to be 100% fine with this glass. It's not going to hold you back in any way, shape, or form. Uh, and there is some optical degradation when you crank it all the way up to 10x magnification because that 10x magnification range is a huge amount of detail. So you're really zooming in on that glass that's in here. And so at 10x, you are going to notice a loss of clarity, a loss of sharpness. However, I have used this optic on my Mark III, which is a 14.5, and I was able to go out to 500 yards on a reduced size steel, so it was 11 and a half by 20, so about a two thirds torso target, uh, with just 55 grain M193, and I was able to hit very, very consistently using the BDC that's in this reticle, or that's in the optic, uh, out to 500 yards on a gun, a reduced size target, no issues whatsoever. So for me, the sweet spot for this optic on man size target, depending on your caliber and skills, of course, is gonna be very easily usable out to say 700, maybe 800 yards. If you're gonna be going farther, you might wanna be putting on your dialing turret cap, so that way there you can uh, dial it a little bit more precisely rather than using the BDC, which I believe goes out to 700 yards. So we've mentioned it quite a bit, but the, uh, glass and the 1x is just a little bit underneath what i would like to see for this price point but currently that's sort of just part and parcel for a budget lpvo especially a budget 1 to 10 lpvo that costs you under 500 bucks you're probably going to have a little bit worse of a 1x and mediocre chinese glass but now let's go ahead and move on to something that i'm going to say that the optic does very very well and that is of course the reticle now the reticle is a bdc style reticle with a very interesting design going on in the center let's say and it also has some very nifty auto ranging features as well as some wind holds as well so it basically does everything you want it to do without uh, cluttering up your screen too much or without uh, being too imprecise to use at long range or too precise to be slow up close. So let's go ahead and start out with the center area of the reticle. Now, if I haven't mentioned it already, this is a second focal plane optic, which I am very thankful for. I don't like first focal plane LPVOs. Don't argue with me. I probably shoot better than you do. But Let's go ahead and talk about the center part because the center part for me, the 1X performance of any LPVO is the most important because again, it is a low power variable optic, not a high power optic. If it was a high power optic, then the higher magnifications would of course be the most important. But since I am most likely going to be using this for my personal application up close with the ability to go to longer ranges, I want that 1X to be as good as it can be and I want that reticle to be as fast while still not being too cluttered uh, so that I can use it up close and get Get the hits exactly where I want them. Now, the center area on the reticle is a half horseshoe, half kind of eaten donut. It has some cutouts in it and it has a one MOA center dot. Now, one MOA at 10x. So at 1x, it's like a 10 MOA dot. So it's pretty fast while still not covering up or being too cluttered that I can't still put that exactly where I want it on a target, even at 1x. And now, because it is a second focal plane optic, and the reticle changes proportionally to your uh, magnification. So for instance, uh, whereas a first focal plane does not change proportionally to your magnification, it stays true to your magnification. The second focal plane does change, even though it doesn't change its size, it changes uh, its effect because it of course does not grow as your magnification grows. So at 10x, that one MOA dot or that big dot is only one MOA. Now one MOA is still a pretty large aiming point, especially if you're shooting smaller targets up to say five, six, 700 yards. Like if you were trying to shoot a 10 inch steel plate at like 600 yards, that one MOA dot is going to cover up most of the target. So for some people that's gonna be a little bit too imprecise, which is why 
Um, for certain applications, I might use the dialing turret cap, but for most applications, for again, man size targets or reduced size man targets, I'm gonna be using the BDC. But the, the center area of the reticle is very, very fast up close. It's very reminiscent of like the EOTech Donut of Death as well as the Vortex, their center area, where it's basically like uh, three quarters of a horseshoe, that sort of thing. It really draws your eye to the center and uh, allows you to make shots very, very quickly. And again, in my personal use case scenario, LPVOs are supposed to be very good up close with the ability to stretch out longer when I need it or just to get more positive identification on target. Because again, 1X, um, even if you're shooting at say 50, 75 yards, if you might not be able to tell exactly what's going on, if there are multiple targets in an enclosed environment, let's say, you might want a little bit extra magnification, a little bit more clarification on exactly what's going on before you pull the triggers. So overall, the center area of the Constantine 1 to 10 is actually my favorite reticle on any LPVO that I've used, even better than the Vortex Viper. Now the Viper is better because it has fiber optic illumination, which means that that center dot gets fire bright, whereas this gets daylight bright to where I can see it and it helps draw my eye to the center. Uh, and it's definitely very, very usable in like low light scenarios, that sort of thing but it's not going to be that true fire hot red dot bright daylight bright illumination that you're going to get in like the viper the razor hd and other very very high-end optics so the reticle design is my favorite out of any lpvo that i've used the illumination is a little subpar and again i like illumination some people don't some people say you don't need it and overall even without illumination because it is a big very, very easy to pick up reticle, the center area of the reticle. Uh, for me, on 1X performance, it is one of the fastest and my favorite LPVO reticle, currently at least in the center section. Now let's go ahead and talk about the rest of the reticle. Now I have my phone out right now, so I have a diagram in front of it so I can kind of describe it to you because it is fairly complicated. There's a lot of cool stuff going on. So it is, of course, a BDC reticle. So I believe the BDC for 556 goes out to 800 yards or 700 or 800 yards, depending on how many lines there are. The only thing about them is they're not marked, but that would just be more clutter in the screen. So again, as long as you know what your holds are for a given distance, you're gonna be just fine. Now, I took this on a 14.5 out to 500 yards on, again, a reduced size man target. No problems whatsoever. The BDC lined up very well for me. However, it's going to depend, again, on your ammunition, your gun, caliber, all that sort of fun stuff, biometrics for that day. All sorts of fun stuff is going to actually... Uh, dictate where your bullet is actually going to land in relation to the BDC. But again, that's going to be for you to sort of figure out. And that's why it's important to test your optics, test your guns in conjunction with your optics to figure out how they perform at different distances. So you do have a BDC out to 800 yards. I have no doubts that with the right ammunition and skills that that is going to be a very easy to use BDC. I haven't gotten to use the entire BDC as I only took this out to 500. But again, if you have access to 800 plus yards you're definitely going to be able to stretch it out to that now on top of that on the top above the optic kind of in space you have auto ranging so basically you have shoulder height ranging or so shoulder width ranging based on an 18 inch shoulder so you put that little crosshair on somebody's shoulders and you will dictate if they're at three four five or six hundred yards you also have the exact same ranging on your BDC reticle as well. So basically, if you have a man-sized target out there, you just line it up with whatever size that shoulder size is supposed to be within the reticle, and it's that's what distance your target is at. So let's say you're trying to figure out how far somebody is away. I'm standing 600 yards away from you. You put the crosshair and my shoulders line up with the 600 yard line. That's how far away I am. And of course you can uh, move it up or down a little bit if I don't quite fit. I also have much wider shoulders than most people. I have 22 inch shoulders versus 18 inches which is the average so most people are quite small but wait there's more you also have wind holds within the BDC you have five mile an hour which is the edges of the BDC lines and then you have a 10 mile an hour dot as well so you have wind holds within your uh, BDC, I believe, again, they're calibrated for 55 grain 5.56. I could be wrong about that, and that should be listed uh, in their description of the optic. The only other thing that I know of for a ranging feature is that the 
center area of that inner circle is 8 MOA at 10x, which at 100 yards, it should perfectly fit a human head inside of it. Or if it only fills up half of it, you're at 200 yards and so on and so forth. So there is a lot of cool stuff going on within the reticle. And for my very simple testing, uh, it was very accurate out to 500 yards. I haven't tested it in crazy high wind conditions or at least full value. I was in high winds at the time, but it wasn't really uh, going left to right. It was like a, coming across my shoulder at a weird angle. But it has a ton of features packed into the reticle. Now, all those cool features, all the things that I like about it don't matter if the optic fails or it breaks or it doesn't hold zero. So now let's go ahead and talk about testing. So the testing of this optic, currently we're at about 1500 rounds. I like the optic a lot, so I shoot it a lot. It's been on a lot of different guns. It's been on the Geisley behind me. It's been on the Roscoe race gun. It's been on my Mark III, my Mark III test upper, and it's been on this Mark IV as well. Again, I really like the optic, so I ended up testing it on a ton of different guns, using it on long range, all that sort of fun stuff. And I think the optic is very good. So, a little bit of a spoiler alert, it passed the durability testing with flying colors. So, all the optics that I test, or nearly all the optics that I test, get a double drop test. And this optic was no different. So the double drop test is two shoulder height drops uh, from, again, shoulder height for me, which is about 5'9", so I'm not particularly tall, but still onto dirt and rocks to see if it maintains zero. One drop on the top of the optic and then one drop on the side of the optic. I have had optics more expensive, bend and break during these tests. I've had cheap optics pass with flying colors, and there's always gonna be a little bit of variation in how it lands and all that sort of other fun stuff. It's not really a scientific test, it's just a redneck test to see how well the optic is going to perform if it hit, has a sharp impact. It doesn't necessarily have to be a drop, it can be any sort of sharp impact that we're simulating, but it's basically how well do the internals hold up is it going to fail on you? Is it going to bend on you? Is the zero going to shift way off paper? Now, we were using the Mark IV as the test upper, which is again, personally assembled by me that are available on my website. And we shot a five round control group, which was very, very good at about three quarters of an inch. We then did a double drop test. Then after the double drop test, we go ahead, we put in five more rounds and we shot 10 rounds within an inch of each other or just over an inch. So 10 rounds and just over an inch at only 50 yards. And also the shift in zero was one MOA or less. Now one MOA or less for me is very, very good. There was no major shift in zero whatsoever. That would still keep you on man-sized targets out to 600 yards after two shoulder height drops. And again, I have seen other more expensive optics fail this and have more shift than that after the same amount of drops or even lighter drops sometimes. And it's also worth mentioning that it was tested in their very budget uh, scope. Now the scope itself, uh, the scope mount, I should say, sorry, is a kind of a carbon copy of the Geisley Super Precision and it's actually set up fairly well. Uh, I torque the cross bolts down to 50 inch pounds and then the top bolts down to 18 inch pounds. And that yielded very, very good results again essentially maintaining zero over 10 rounds, putting 10 rounds in an under two MOA group, that's with just 55 grain ball ammunition, that is going to get you out to five, 600 yards, still on target, no problem. And then that is again after a double drop test. So for me personally, that sort of reliability and hold is very, very good. Anytime I see less than one MOA shift in zero, I can attribute that to my personal error. I can attribute that to parallax because I was I had to get off the gun, drop the gun, get back on the gun, and if you put your head in a slightly different position, you're going to induce a little bit of parallax error. So again, after about 1500 rounds of 556, no noticeable shift in impact uh, during recoil, and then on top of that, after a double drop test, barely any shift in zero. And again, that could be attributed to my personal error. That's well within my own margin of error, you know, under one MOA of shift. Uh, could be parallax, could be a variety of things, but overall the scope did an exceptional job. Nothing bent, nothing came loose. It's barely marred up over some fairly hard use. I don't really treat my stuff all that well. Um, 
So overall, I'm very impressed with its performance. Uh, again, I can't talk to every optic that Vector makes because Vector, again, makes a ton of different optics in a ton of different price categories. However, the Constantine 1 to 10, in my personal experience, very, very good. I'm very happy with it. Now, when we get into price to performance, I think it's a pretty interesting optic. I think that it does a lot of things very well. I think its biggest two downsides are mediocre glass and mediocre 1x performance, especially compared to some of the other optics in this price category. So for instance, this is about the same price as what is still the best $500 or sub $500 LPVO, and that is the Vortex Viper PST Gen 2. That is still my favorite LPVO to use. It still has the best 1X. It still has better glass than this. It is manufactured in the Philippines versus Chinese glass, and the glass quality is noticeably better. The 1X is better. The 1X illumination, that fire red dot, is a little bit better for fast target acquisition, though again, the 1X reticle in this optic without that fire illumination is my favorite reticle design, though again, it does not have that fire hot illumination. But when you compare it to other optics like the Swamp Fox Arrowhead 1 to 10, 1 to 10 is at those arrowhead 1 to 10 actually has very very similar style of features it's a little bit heavier it has non-capped turrets it's maybe aesthetically a little bit more pleasing a little bit less simple uh, looking the illumination was about the same decent illumination uh the reticle though was definitely a little bit worse on the arrowhead so dollar for dollar this is going to be very very close to the arrowhead again depending on your personal preferences so I am going to say that this is a high value LPVO. However, you got to think about whether or not it fits your specific application. Do you need a 1 to 10 LPVO? For most people, the answer is probably going to be no. They're going to be better suited off with a red dot, red dot magnifier, or a 1 to 6 LPVO because there is a wide plurifer proliferation of very, very good 1 to 6 budget LPVOs on the market. However, if for whatever reason you just need more magnification, this is a good option. It does get my tentative seal of approval. I will be testing out more, vort more vector optics in the future to see how the rest of their products hold up. But for right now, on this specific optic, I am very impressed with its performance. And if you're looking for a budget 1 to 10, which is again a very niche category, I think it does a very good job. So that's about it for me, guys. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you guys in the next one. It's time for me to go to bed. Peace off. <clears throat>what is the time it's 154 i've been recording for almost an hour battery is flashing this is my third battery that i've gone through you guys are welcome sip